What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be digging into potato misconceptions. We're gonna be talking about all the misconceptions that I've heard from the past couple years of doing these videos. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break them down and really explain why they don't work and some uh, alternatives that will work so that not only are we kind of busting these myths and these misconceptions and getting you guys the actual factual information, but I'm also gonna be helping you guys to actually have success when growing potatoes. Now we do have a complete growing guide on how to grow potatoes. If you don't know anything about how to grow potatoes, I'd recommend checking out that video first because that's going to help you out way more than this video will. Once you have the foundational building blocks, then come back to this video and it'll probably help you out a lot. So in this video, like I said, all we're going to do is basically going to be breaking down those potato growing misconceptions. And it was brought about from a few people that have sent in emails over the past couple days. And I said, you know, I know I've done videos about this in the past, but I've never really done a kind of an all-encompassing umbrella video about how to, you know, uh, you know, not only uh, how to properly grow potatoes, but kind of busting those myths and misconceptions around growing potatoes. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. If I achieve this goal uh, of helping you guys grow bigger, go home, if I achieve the goal of helping you guys grow potatoes better and busting myths, and I teach you something throughout this video, make sure to promise me that you're gonna throw a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not yet already, and share this video with a friend. So let's get going. So the first most common potato growing misconception is the idea of the potato tower. Now, I think a lot of you, you probably have maybe even tried this, have at least heard of a potato tower. And the potato tower is essentially just a box that you build, you plant a potato in the bottom and you continuously hill the potato. And as you go, you basically put up boards along this box. And as the potato grows, you also fill in more, you hill it higher. And essentially all along the stem, the potato will produce more roots and those roots will produce more potatoes. And then by the end of the season, one plant can produce up to 75 pounds of potatoes. I think you've all have seen this or heard of this, and it's something that's very attractive for new gardeners and it really kind of lures in uh, you know, young gardeners that wanna grow a ton of food in a small amount of space and I understand. I definitely sympathize with you if you don't have that much space and you really wanna maximize it and optimize uh, you know, to grow the most amount of food. That's a great goal to have. The problem is that this video was very misleading. This video was done I think back in 2016, 2015 and it went absolutely viral. And since then, the entire gardening industry has really gotten around the idea that if, if you just keep hilling potatoes, they'll just keep producing more potatoes. And biologically, I hate to say it, that is just not true. You could take any of these potatoes right here, you could hill them up three, four, five feet, and you will not get any more potatoes than what you'd have done at the very bottom. And the reason why is because that video was done based around a magic trick. We've done a whole video debunking this a long time ago. And yes, it was probably the poorest quality video I've ever done. I, was, I did it in my apartment back you know, five, six years ago. But the premise was based around how this video was actually produced. The person did not have one potato. They completely flat out lied. It's not one potato. There was multiple potatoes because that's the only way biologically it can be done. There was a potato that was put at the bottom of the barrel, then it was hilled. As it grew, they actually hilled it and then planted another potato on top. Then as it grew, they, put, uh, they hilled it, they planted another potato on top of that. They obviously had a very long growing season and they let these potatoes grow basically uh, their, their entire life. And they kept doing that until the top of the barrel was full. They let all the plants then die and then they harvested it as if it was one plant. And it's just not true because potatoes will not produce uh, roots past about two inches up the stem. These roots are called support roots. Any plant has the capability of producing support roots. What that, uh, the purpose of support roots uh, is, is to support the plant during high winds. It's kind of an anchor. Potatoes can do it, tomatoes will do it, peppers will do it, sunflowers will do it, corn will do it. Basically any plant uh, can produce these support roots. And it just is, like I said, it's an anchor so that uh, the, the plant is a little more sturdy during high winds. And um, so these, these uh, potato plants will produce support roots and the support roots will produce uh, potatoes. But the potato plant will not produce roots any higher up, no matter how high you hill it. The actual purpose of hilling potatoes is to protect the potatoes from sunlight. Potatoes are a member of the Solanense family and so uh, potatoes need to uh, be kept out of sunlight 
in order to stop from turning green. That's the only objective of hilling potatoes. It's not to get more of them. It's not to, uh, you know, you're not, the goal is not to get more potatoes. It's simply to protect the ones that the plant will produce. A lot of people uh, toss around the misconception that potatoes, because they're in a Solanense family, that they are also like tomatoes. And if tomatoes can be determinate and indeterminate, so can potatoes. But I would ask this question. If peppers are in the Solanense family and eggplants are in the Solanense family, how come they are not determinate or indeterminate? Peppers and eggplants are just peppers and eggplants. They don't have uh, subtypes. They're not, there's not an indeterminate pepper and a determinate pepper. There's not an indeterminate eggplant and a determinate eggplant. So the story really falls apart. And the only reason why that part is even brought into this whole video is because people like to conflate that uh, potatoes are a Solanense family crop and therefore they can have an indeterminate potato and a determinate potato. This is just not true. What you can have is an early season, mid season, and late season potato, but that does not correlate to more tuber development. That simply correlates to when the tubers are ready to be harvested. It correlates to the flowering cycle that happens, whether the flowers occur earlier in the season or later in the season. After the flowers drop off is when tuber development begins. So the later they flower, the later they're gonna produce tubers. That's the only thing that it correlates to. It does not mean that a potato is gonna keep producing potatoes as long as the plant is alive. And you know, as long as you keep hilling, the potato is gonna keep producing uh, potatoes. It's just not true. Third misconception around growing potatoes is that the more nitrogen you give them, the more tuber development you're going to get. This also is not true. Tuber development is only dictated by one, one, and I mean one nutrient. It was found by uh, the, uh, the agricultural extension of, I believe, Cornell. Um, and don't quote me on that, but I remember reading a white paper. And what they were basically saying in that white paper was that the only ingredient uh, or the only uh, nutrient that was found to actually increase production was not nitrogen, not phosphorus, not calcium. It was potassium. What they found is that by increasing the potassium by twofold, they were actually able to increase uh, p uh, tuber production or potato production <laughs> twofold as well. And so there was a threshold that then they 3 x the potassium levels and they found that after about doubling the amount of potassium in the soil, tuber production kind of hit a, uh, a threshold. It really could not continue to scale at that rate. So if you 4 x the amount of potassium, you're not gonna get 4x the potatoes. But if you did at least uh, 2x the amount of potassium found in the soil, you would at least get 2x the amount of potatoes. This was absolutely incredible and truly, I mean, really, really helped me out because a lot of people throw around the idea that, you know, the more foliage you have, the more energy the potato's gonna have, which means the more uh, tuber production the potatoes can have. Not true. The amount of phosphorus you add, people will say, oh, if you add more phosphorus, potatoes are a root crop. It's gonna help them generate more roots. Not true. Root development is not fruit development. Tuber development only has to do with potassium. So flat out, not true. Now, yes, it is true you should give them a well-balanced fertilizer. Yes, it is true that potatoes are a heavy feeder. They use lots of nitrogen. They certainly are gonna benefit from some, uh, from some phosphorus. That's why we feed our plants with lots of trifecta, lots of compost, worm castings, all the good stuff that they need to uh, survive and thrive. But we really wanna focus on that potassium because potassium is kind of that regulator of how many potatoes the plant can produce. A fourth potato growing misconception is that you can't grow potatoes from store-bought potatoes. Now this isn't 100% true and it's not 100% false either. It's kind of 50-50 and that's because there's a little gray area. Yes, you can go to the grocery store and plant potatoes, but you can't plant all types of potatoes. Where I'm getting at is that you can't plant conventionally grown potatoes. If I just go to the grocery store and buy potatoes, plant them in the garden, I'm gonna have really bad results. And that's because conventionally grown potatoes are sprayed with a sprout inhibitor. That sprout inhibitor prevents the eyes from growing and those eyes reduce the shelf life. And so grocery stores love conventionally grown potatoes because they can sit on the shelf for two, three months with no ill effects whatsoever. But you take an organically grown potato from the grocery store, throw it in the garden, you're gonna be fine. And that's because those organic potatoes have not been sprayed with the sprout inhibitor. 
So yes, you can go to the grocery store, you can buy organically grown potatoes, and you can throw them in the ground and you'll have success. Will you have the best success? No, and that's because seed potatoes are selected for you know, prime genetics. They're selected for the strongest, uh, the, the strongest genetics, the, the best yields, um, and so they, they've really kind of culled out the, the healthiest and best potatoes to use for seed. So you're not, gonna nece- you're not going to necessarily get the best quality seed potatoes from the grocery store if they're organic, but you can still plant them and get a yield. I just wanna make that very clear that you know, it's a common misconception that people just say, if you buy it from the store, you can't plant it. So uh, just make that very clear that if they're organic, you're good to go. If they're conventional and they're non-organic, just best to either eat them or throw them in the compost pile. All right, and the fifth and final potato growing misconception is that you can only grow potatoes once a year. This is just not true at all. Potatoes only take about 65 to 75 days to fully mature. And so once the flowers drop off, tuber production begins. And you can pull up your potatoes even when they're very small and use them for small little, you know, boiling potatoes or baby potatoes. And those baby potatoes are very delicious and people sometimes prefer just to only eat those. And so you can grow your potatoes till they're just at their maturity point, pull them up and then plant them again. And a lot of people, if you have more than 140 days in your growing season, you can grow two successions of potatoes in a single growing season. So don't just think of potatoes as an early season crop that you have to get in the ground as early as possible, grow it all season, let the plant grow up, let it die, and then harvest just the biggest potatoes. Yes, you are going to get larger potatoes and you might get a few more potatoes from letting the plant fully grow and then, and then fully die, but you're also sacrificing a good part of your, uh, the rest of your growing season uh, to possibly growing more potatoes. So if you really value those small young ones, try doing that. It's a great way to grow some, a good amount of potatoes and uh, really high quality potatoes at that. But potatoes are by no means a one, you know, a, a one, uh, one planting crop, you could say. So you can definitely plant more than one. And if you're in a, uh, a growing season where you don't get a frost or a freeze, you can plant three or four successions of potatoes. So definitely give that a shot. Don't just plant them in early season, plant them all season. As soon as you pull up the plants, get another one in the ground. As long as you have 65 to 75 days to, uh, to allow that plant to mature, you can actually get potatoes. So I highly recommend it. I really hope that you try it. And these are the, those are the five common potato growing misconceptions, at least the five most common that I hear. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope that you learned something new. And I hope that's, that this information helps you guys to grow more potatoes, grow them easier, and really just distinguish between fact and fiction with growing potatoes. There's a lot of hearsay out there. There's a lot of, you know, just... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say lies, but there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And a lot of people, they just, uh, they don't even really know that they're spreading around misconceptions. Um, So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.